I tried painting my nails for Pride Month, like all rainbow and shit, but there is no... I, I am not proud of these. Hey, what's Demo, and I am super fucking excited. There is a lot happening internally right now. <coughs> one of them is cold. <coughs> Another one's anxiety. So I'm really fucking excited because this video is actually the first video in a series I am starting on this channel right here, Water Shock. I bet you actually expected it to be on another channel. Like, you know how most people... Shut up, Damien, just get on with the video. Basically, I'm starting a new series on this channel called Becoming a Queen, and the whole point of the series is to document me. The whole point of the series is to document myself kind of knowing about drag and being interested in drag and going from that to becoming a fully fledged drag queen, hopefully working professionally because I've decided that's one of the many things I want to pursue in this world, so let's fucking do it. And that's pretty much the entire series right there. It's just going to be documenting me learning everything I can about drag, learning how to perform in drag, learning how to do the makeup, how to do the clothes, sewing, the history of drag, looks, all of that shit. And I'm gonna suck at it. Most of it. Some of it, all of it, none of it. I don't fucking know. Actually, I already do know a little bit because I have already started. Plot twist. This chair is so squishy. So the way most of these videos are gonna go down is I'm gonna kind of vlog what I'm doing with drag, whether it's practicing makeup, doing a gig, doing a competition, something like that. I'm gonna vlog what I'm doing and then I'm gonna edit the shit out of it and talk about what it was I did. Cause I'm bad at vlogging and you, it never makes any sense. I mean, I'm just really bad at YouTube in general. So if you want like a quality series, go, go away. But if you want a hot mess, you fucking found it, let's Go! For this episode, I'm just gonna kinda catch you up with everything I've done so far because I have already started. Plot twist, I'm sorry. My rat drinks so fucking noisily. Can you hydrate quieter? Thank you. But yeah, as I said, I'm gonna catch you up with everything I've done already because I have started practicing, I have actually started performing, and I have been kind of vlogging that. Let's get into it. So you might be asking why drag? You might also not really give a flying fuck why this particular man chose to dress as a woman. But I'm gonna fucking tell you anyway, hey! I like drag because it's a culmination of a bunch of different talents and skills. You've got makeup, you've got performance, you've got creating a look, you've got networking. That, that is a fucking talent in itself that I do not possess. How do you talk to people that aren't a camera? You've got to be your own choreographer, your own director for your shows. You've got to pretty much do everything and I love that. I hate that. I hate doing anything, but I love doing everything, you know? I'm an incredibly lazy control freak. And some of the aspects that go into drag are things that I was already doing. I was already dancing my entire life. I've been dancing since the age of six. I've been professionally dancing for years. I've already been lip syncing by myself in my room because I don't really need to give you a reason for that. Just know that I do it. I've been performing since I was like six, so I've been doing stage makeup almost my entire life. So I already have a basic idea of makeup and I just want to refine those skills. So that's what I've been doing and that's what I'm going to continue to do because I've never done learning, darling. I need to like breathe between sentences, that would help. But yeah, basically I picked drag because there are so many different elements to it that actually really interest me. They're things that I would want to do separately anyway, so why not combine them all and be a big fucking fabulous woman? Hey, why not? So that's why I'm getting into drag, but how did I get into drag? Ah! I'll fucking tell you. Being a performer, I've always known about drag. I've always known drag exists. I have a few friends who have dabbled in drag, some who do it professionally, and I've always been told by friends that I should give it a go, but it just, it never really appealed to me because I used to look at it more as a uh, gender identity expression or something like that. I didn't really understand that it was just a performance art. Well, can just be a performance art. Can be whatever the fuck you want it to be, but let's not get into that in this video. I do not know why I hit myself, but I hope it was good for you. So I guess my biggest inspiration for getting into drag was actually RuPaul's Drag Race. Fucking shocker, I'm basic as everyone else. What did you expect? I've got blue hair. I'm obviously not going to be groundbreaking. Pillow staining? Yeah. Groundbreaking? Nah. So since I've been introduced to RuPaul's Drag Race, I've pretty much watched it religiously going in and out depending on how busy my life is because, you know, I have a life. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> But yeah, it is one of my favorite shows. It's one of the only reality TV shows I watch because it is actually interesting. <laughs> Let's watch a bunch of people be angry at each other in a house. Oh, fuck off. 
I don't want your big brother bullshit. I want a bunch of talented individuals showing off their talents. Thank you, that is actual interesting TV. Not fucking arguments over who took the fucking bread. I don't care. So, since this series is about moi learning to become foi, I think it's important you know what I'm already confident with going into it because I'm a performer as I've mentioned way too many fucking times so I'm fine with performing, I'm fine with connecting with an audience, lip syncing, choreographing, dancing, performing in heels, those are all things I'm not worried about at all. I'm not too worried about makeup because I know it needs more work but that's just something that's going to come with time. However, I have not sewn since 2006 and I do not fashion. I buy whatever's on special and is comfortable. So learning how to put looks together, learning how to create my own costumes and things like that, that's going to be a massive challenge for me, something I'm really excited to learn to do though, uh, as well as styling wigs and things like that. That's just going to be a fucking hot mess. I mean, I did work as a hairdresser for a little bit, so I'm not like too stressed about it. I have a basic understanding of hair, but I have never really worked with wigs. I normally just work with this wig right here, darling, okay? You can't, you, um, you don't understand that joke because you can't feel my hair, but my hair feels less real than a wig does. So that's pretty much what this series is going to be based on. Myself learning all the aspects that there are to drag and trying to perfect them, seeing what works, what doesn't work, sharing good experiences with you, sharing shit experiences with you, vlogging terribly and trying to recap it in this really squishy chair. All of that. But also the other side of drag that people don't immediately think of, like finding yourself in the drag community, creating a drag character, keeping up a social media presence, all of that shit that when you say drag, people don't go, yeah, that's drag, son. You know, wigs and lips and shit. And there's other stuff too, I think. I don't fucking know. But I guess we're gonna fucking find out, aren't we? <laughs> So there will be specific videos dedicated to certain things, like I think learning how to sew is definitely going to be its own video, finding yourself in the drag community going to be its own video, because I'm shit at making friends, guys. It's going to take at least 20 minutes. But yeah, I think I've said most of what I want to say to introduce this series. So with all of that being said, let's catch you up. Technically, I would say I really got into and started trying drag October last year for Halloween. Like most queens, I was born on Halloween. Hello? Hi. There's no one I'm talking to over there. That is my air conditioning unit. I tried drag once or twice before, but being a bit of a perfectionist and not loving how it came out last time, I kind of gave up pretty quickly. Uh, and then it took a long time before I bothered to give it another go, and for some reason it just kind of like, was better. Even though I hadn't practiced for like a year. So maybe that's my first tip. Just Stop trying for a while and then you get good at stuff. Originally my drag name was Stephanie Dixon because like stiff dick and it's like a play on the word Stephanie. I actually just explained that really, really dumb name to you. So sorry uh, for assuming you're a fucking idiot. But I don't really like puns as a form of humor. Yeah, they're okay, but that's not my sense of humor. I don't come up with puns and like, oh, here's my fantastic pun, guys, enjoy it. My sense of humor is just me being really fucking stupid. So I decided that wasn't the name for me. So I didn't really have a drag name for a bit, and one day I was sitting out the back with some friends, having a good old smoke on the good old bong, and all of a sudden I was like, Susan is a fucking stupid name. I'm gonna call myself that. And I did. I don't have a last name. Just Susan. So that's technically when Susan was born, on that random nondescript day while I was smoking weed in the backyard. That, that's when Susan was born. Susan made an appearance at Halloween. Susan then disappeared for a very long time. Susan made an appearance at some random casting for a commercial that my manager got me, where I had to be in drag. That was odd. I guess I'll fill you in on that, because it was, it was odd. Basically, I'd been in full drag once, and that was a Halloween costume, and I sent some pictures to my manager. My manager saw these pictures and went, wow, you're really fucking good at that. And I was like, cool, thank you. And then I didn't hear anything about that for a while. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, she's like, uh, I got you a casting in drag for a bank commercial. So I was like, all right, um, I, okay, sure. I guess I'll do it. I actually couldn't do it. It was conflicting with something else, but they wanted to see me so badly, the casting people, that they uh, actually organized a second audition date so I could make it. And I was like, all right, they really want to see me. Oh, come the fuck in. So I woke up way too early and took way too long to paint my face. Probably, definitely more than three hours. And it's still not... It's not much quicker than that now. 
I got my friend to drive me into the city because it was my second time in drag and I did not feel like getting ridiculed. Nah, uh, Sunny Jim. This is what I looked like. I was pretty impressed with myself. Second proper face I'd ever really painted. Went into the city, did the casting. They really liked me, went really well. Then nothing came of it. And that is, that is, that is pretty much every casting you will ever go to ever. <laughs> so those are the first two times I ever really like went out in drag, like did more than just put on my makeup and sat in my room. Already I'm kind of like, wow, this is going, this is going fast. Um, shit, okay. And I got a little bit intimidated, got a little bit anxious, worried that I was putting myself ahead of where I actually was and kind of talking myself up and being like, yeah, I'm a great performer, I'm a great drag queen, look at my makeup. Uh, and then I'd get like a gig and be like, I don't know what to do. So I was shitting myself a little bit and I took a few steps back and kind of didn't touch drag for a bit. Then after a while I started doing some more makeup practice, posting it on Instagram because I like to have like a record of how my makeup's improved and I like people to see that. So if you want to check it out, my Instagram for drag specifically is Susan Does Drag, spelled exactly how you think. Link will probably be in the description. But yeah, check out my Instagram. There's shit on there. Cool. Where was I headed with all of this? Oh yeah, so I took a break from drag, I was just practicing my own makeup, and then one day I was doing a stream, putting myself in drag. I actually did not do a very good paint, but I was lip syncing at the end of the stream, and I lip synced to... Anyway, as I was fucking saying, I was doing a little bit of a lip stonk. I was doing a bit of a lip stonk. I was doing a lip sync at the end of a stream which I had spent putting on a face. So I'm in drag, I'm doing a lip sync. RuPaul's calls me, mother comes on. I'm like, yeah, I'll lip sync to this. Turns out I know most of the words. I'm like, cool, that was kind of fun. Why not film a little video for Instagram of me doing that? So I did that. And I posted the video and it got a weirdly large amount of attention from other Australian drag queens, specifically down in Melbourne, which isn't even in the same state as me. So that was good. And then I had a friend who has a lot of connections in the drag world reach out to me and go, hey, you need to get off your ass and fucking do something with your drag. So he entered me into two competitions in Melbourne and I was like, fuck, I am not ready for this. He's like, bitch, too bad, your name's in. You've got a week to get your shit together. I crapped everywhere. So I thought, fuck. I'm in it now, better get my shit together. So I got entered into two competitions. One was called Drag Junior and the other was called Baby Drag. I was on the promotional images for it stuff, which was circulating. And weirdly, words started to spread about me existing. Like, what? At this point, I've been in drag twice and made one... That's still two. Made one lip sync video on my Instagram. And queens are messaging me from Melbourne going, bitch, you've made waves. People can't wait for you to get here for the competitions. Your lip sync's really impressive, blah, blah, blah. And being really fucking nice and supportive. And I'm just like, oh my God, oh my fucking shit. So then I started to get anxious again. That was cool. I realized that I had set expectations for myself because I had shown off only what I was good at. And I'd set these expectations for myself and was about to go do a proper live performance of drag, which I'd never done. And I didn't know if I could meet these expectations that I'd set. So I was shitting. And my camera just stopped recording. Where was I? Oh, that's right. I was shitting. But I got all my crap together. I went and bought an outfit and I modified it a little bit so it wasn't just something that was off the rack. It was pretty basic. Here's a picture of the full outfit. Boobity boobity boo. Mm -hmm. Most of what I'm wearing is actually from H&M and I just kind of like cut up some bits, glued them to other bits with hot glue, did not sew a single fucking stitch, uh, cause glue just is easier. So I fucking hot glued together this fucking outfit and I didn't buy a wig cause I didn't have the money and poked myself in the eye just then. And yeah, th th uh, this is what I looked like. So, I don't know if I've already said that, I think I did like three seconds ago. I'm so sorry, editing Damien. This is gonna be such a mess. So I finally had my outfit. I had my song and dance all ready to go and I flew off down to Melbourne to shit my pants some more. The first competition was called Drag Junior and was actually the very first time I had ever performed in drag. Prior to that, I only really kind of walked around vaguely looking like a woman and that was, that was it. So this is the first time I'd ever like performed for an audience in drag and I fucking loved it. I am so gay, sometimes I don't realize it. And then I put on a bunch of makeup and women's clothes and I realize it. Isn't that crazy? 
I had a really fucking good time. I actually performed to Call Me Mother because that's what people were kind of expecting me to do when I got there. So I did that, it went really well. I got really good feedback. The judges did mention I kind of danced like a man, which being a man who has danced since the age of six makes a lot of sense. So that's something I know I've got to work on is that, you know? Definitely gotta work on that. Uh, and my makeup actually melted off my face, like almost completely because I did not set it very well. But to be fair, prior to this competition, like a few days prior to, all my makeup got stolen out of my bag on a flight. So I had to buy all drugstore makeup because it's all I could afford. Look, I've got nothing against drugstore makeup. Even when I have money, I still use a lot of drugstore makeup. But there are certain things like setting powders and stuff that you really shouldn't skimp on when you're doing drag, and I did. So my face melted off. It was not hot, it was not cute, but fuck was my dance cute. Cute enough to get me third place. Yeah. So overall the first competition was amazing, had a great time, got some great tips to go away with, and got third place, first time ever performing in drag. I was pretty fucking impressed with myself. And then the next night was the next competition, so I was ready to shit all over again. This comp was called Baby Drag and there were six entrants and I was last, which... I, I was last in, in both of them actually, because I think I was a late entrant in both of them. But yeah, I was just chilling backstage, waiting for my turn, touching up my makeup a million times because I'm super paranoid it's going to melt off, making friends with some of the other queens. All of them were lovely at both competitions. This comp was actually really fun because they got everyone to perform and then before they announced the winner, they got all of the competition to... Competitors? They got all of the competitors to back up dance for the host of the show while she did lip sync and it was just fucking stupid and fun and I lived for it and it was just like... It's a good vibe. It was a fucking good blood. But yeah, at the end of the night, I actually ended up winning this competition, which fucking fucked me up. I was not expecting my second time ever performing in drag to win a competition, and there were some fierce queens there. There were some really good performers, and just to be recognized felt absolutely amazing. Um, the host slash judge gave me a lot of really nice critiques and compliments and things like that. Said my makeup was sharp, my dancing was on point, I was entertaining, I had character, I had comedy, and I was like, awesome, fucking thank you. These are all things that I consciously put into my routine. These are all things that as a trained performer I knew should be in a routine, and to have them recognized and mentioned by a seasoned performer was amazing. It was just amazing. <laughs> And then because I won, I actually got to go downstairs to where the main club venue was and there was a lot bigger of an audience and I actually got to do my performance to open for some other drag queens for the night. So that was pretty fucking cool and here's like a little bit of that but it's a copywritten song so here is only a little bit of that. I'm super excited for the girl who won tonight. Her name is Susan, so please make her feel very, very welcome. Please give it up for Susan!
Oh my god, he's your little blouse. Oh my god, happy birthday! Oh my god, Susan. I think there's more of it on my Twitter, I don't know. Susan does drag! So my first two times performing in drag were pretty fucking encouraging, and then I find out a few days later that my friend has got me on a gig with some RuPaul girls. Mrs. Kasha Davis, Charlie Hydes, Tempest DuJour, and Chad Michaels were all touring Australia for the Queens of the Stone Age tour, hosted by BB Gun, featuring local support in each state slash city, and I got to be the local support in Sydney, which was fucking awesome. Just a quick huge thank you to Queer Touring and Events for putting on such an awesome event and having me as a guest performer. That was really fucking fun. Let's talk about it. When I found out I was going to be performing with not even the fact they were RuPaul girls, just seasoned queens who had a lot of experience, I was shitting everywhere again. Seriously, are you uh, there's just so much feces all over my walls. Anyway, I was really nervous because they know what they're doing. They've done this thousands and thousands of times. That's probably too many. Who knows? They've done it a lot more than I have though, and I didn't want to come in being like, check out my eBay wig and my melted face. I didn't want to be shit. Isn't that crazy? But I pulled together some sort of look with a combination of stuff I had previously bought and a bunch of clothes from my roommate Emma. Thank you, Emma. And this is what I looked like, and I was mostly happy with it. I kind of look like a girl, and that's the aim. Backstage, all the girls were absolutely lovely. They were all giving me tips and tricks. Charlie was telling me that, like, you can make spats for your boots, so boot covers, and then you, you know, you get the one pattern and make spats for your boots out of like 10 different materials. And people think you have 10 different pairs of boots, but it's like, nah, bitch, this is the one pair from fucking House of Priscilla and the heel is falling off. Did you not notice? It's not yet, but it will if I keep back flipping in them. Chad Michaels was also lovely, gave me a lot of really nice tips. And when I took my makeup off, she was like, damn, I want to paint your face. And I was like, damn, I want to let you. But who the fuck am I? Some random bitch in Australia and like, that's never gonna happen. Also, I gave Chad weed, wrapped it up in a napkin, and she took it back to her hotel room. <laughs> but yeah, the, the whole night was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed performing on stage. The audience was brilliant. All the queens were lovely. I also got to meet Felicity Procaccino, who's another Sydney queen, and she was lovely as well. She gave me a bunch of tips. I also wore her skirt as a dress. Like, it was just a skirt on her, but on me, it was an entire dress. I felt cute. I think. I just had the best night, honestly, and I got free drinks, which might have been the reason I had the best night. Could it have been performing with some of my favorite icons? Maybe. Could it have been the free drinks? It definitely could have. And I think that pretty much brings you up to speed. I have no idea. I'm gonna edit this video and realize I've left out a thousand different things I wanted to mention, but that's why it's great that this is a series all included in the next video, motherfucker. I need a new fucking chair that I didn't steal off the sidewalk from next door neighbors. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. It's pretty much brought you up to speed with my drag experience. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in staying up to date with this series, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click on that tiny little bell and you'll get some notifications when the next episode comes up. I mean, you might get a notification about like a Q&A video or something because I'm going to post other stuff as well. Don't worry, guys. This isn't the only thing I'm going to be making, but this will be the main focus of this YouTube channel at the moment because it is the main focus of me at the moment. So that's, I just, I just want to make content I actually fucking enjoy. Sorry about it. Let me know in the comments below if you've had any experience with drag, what you think of drag. Just like comment something, motherfucker. Give me that interaction so YouTube recommends my videos. Also give me a like for that exact same reason. If you're interested in drag, whether that's for trying it yourself or you just find it entertaining, definitely stick around for this series because I'm hoping it will be just that, entertaining. If not, maybe a tiny bit educational, just a tiny bit. But stick the fuck around, we've got plenty more episodes coming your way. I will see you in the next video that I post. Thank you very much for watching this one. Um, I, I fucked up my own outro. Fuck off. So I'm almost at the club where I'd be performing. Standing at a bus stop near Central Station for 15 minutes was definitely my favorite part of the journey because I think there's some sort of like football or soccer thing going on today. So um, not, not normally the, the drag queen audience. So I've been getting a lot of looks in the city, but that's fun. That's, that's the whole point, isn't it, to be looked at? I look insane. 
Um, also, I really need to poo, so that's cool too. I, I, I just love bodily functions, don't you? 